I was fortunate to be able to write two Yidid Nefesh. As a matter of fact, we were in 1992, um, which I know you guys, you Chabatskers, know the exact dates, the years in, in, in Tavshin. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 not, yeah. I'm not good at that. I don't know why that is. I, I always, always feel like... No, because, because whenever you speak okay, to, you speak to Lubavitcher, he knows, they know, because you know, there's a lot of uh, um, and a lot of things that were written in certain years, and, and uh, exactly. you connect to those years. Anyway, the reason why I know it's 1992, because I have a photo of the concert, and in those days, the cameras used to have uh, the date, high Mazel, otherwise we would never know when these things took place. Anyway, so, in 1992, we did at our first big show in Israel, Matcha Avram and myself, and the beauty of it was, that uh, I remember I was sitting, was it, we had a wide piano bench, and I was sitting in the middle and I was playing Yedid Nefesh, and Matri came, sat on my right side, and Abraham came and sat on my left side, and we did both Yedid Nefesh together. And it How was, were you able to play? It was very, it was, it, it, I just, I was sque squeezed in between them, but it was a nice feeling, you know, at that time, because, uh, anyway, I was telling before I got here that um, I was learning, you know, Rabbi Lamelech Biderman puts out a, uh, puts out a chaver every, every week of all I kinds of, you print it out. So I print it out also, and it's beautiful. If you have time, I go through it. And uh, he brings a story of Rav Menachem Mendel Futterfass that, that he heard, what? He was uh, one of the big Hasidim, the old, the old Hasidim of the Balatani, the right? The Hasidim. No, he was a Hasidim this, this when? generation. Just the... You're kidding. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay, so there we go. The Rebbe is a Hasid. Really? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, thanks for straightening me out on that. Sure, sure. I just committed like... See, that's uh, why it's uh, important to know the COL, years. COL Live knows that I didn't yes. know exactly when that was. Well, it doesn't matter. This, it's, it's that's okay. the way. It, we need some humility. But anyway. He was a fuss as, as if, you know... From, 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 from yeah. Anyway, he said that... The, the, he heard a story that uh, in the long time ago... This is an old story. Um, there was a, uh, a Yid that was sent to Siberia. No, he was sent to... Uh, and they sent them away suddenly. And in those days, you couldn't, uh, you know, when, they, when they came, they told you, you have to go. You, you grabbed whatever you could, and uh, you never knew when you'd come back. When you'd... Right. Anyway, yeah. so they, put, they sent the seed out, and he was there alone. And, and, uh, and also, there was, was in, in, in Siberia, there are times in the year when um, the, the sun doesn't shine for months. So you don't even know when it's Shabbos, when it's Yantav. You only, you only know through by keeping time that he had, he had, they had a watch. Anyway, and he said that he was, he was very miserable there, obviously. And one day, he's in, it's in, it was in the middle of the day, but it looked like night. And he hears, he hears singing. Now, because it's also very cold and there's not a lot of people, so, you know, the sound, sound travels. travels. And he begins to walk in the direction of the, uh, of, of, of the singing, and he gets and he sees a little hovel in the middle of nowhere and he walks in and he sees an old Yid there was singing Yidid Nefesh with his eyes closed. Some, I don't know what song it was, but it was a song on the words Yidid Nefesh and he was singing with his eyes and he, didn't, he had no idea that he had a visitor. You know? And um, finally he finishes the song and he opens up his eyes and he sees the Yid, the yid over there and he says to him, where, you know, where, how, how long are you here? The seed asks, he says, well, I'm here for 20 years already. So this, this seed is for 20 years. And he says to him, look, do you, do you perhaps, do you have film? Do you have any, because I don't, because when they took me, they just sent me here and, and I had nothing. So the first question, he says, without asking anything, just, do you, he says, well, I'll tell you, I was able to grab a film Shalyad on the way. But that's all I have. I have a film Shalyad. So he says, if you, would you wait with me? Because I'd like to, I'd like to be able to wait after Shabbos, and, and uh, he walked back, and he brought the film, and his seed put on the film, and he made this, uh, and his, uh, he made this big this bracha, and he is neshama, left the, this world with after he put on this this film. Mm -hmm. So 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 Nachman Mendel Futterfas, what how does it relate to you today? He says, imagine if Cholid of Achas, one of us would be put away for twenty years, would we still be singing Yedid Nefesh after twenty years in Siberia? The way the seed was singing, you didn't have after 20 years. Anyway, so to me that was very touching. You did What? You got it. This is Marthas. Yes, Amor Racham Hon. The Shoi Chav the Koel Ritzoi Necho. Show you how the coal is going 
You're here, you're me. Up your voice. You came to him when you were young, uh-huh. and he was able to 
take you know your voice sure. high notes low notes and it's able to fix you up in a yeah. way that now your voice doesn't go anywhere you go you, you could do anything that you want with your voice we, we see it today mm-hmm. that was really nice meaning so, a lot of singers that come to him they came with the broken yeah, voice after and then it, was, it takes it a few years for us to fix it up right. and even exactly. after he does it still takes a long time you know to so the gets it. a lot of times if you're nervous then the gilos you know you go back to the, to the bad habit right right here it's so this song, by the way, it's not, it's not as high. The high part is not as high, it's just very intense. So, so what happens is, because it's so intense, <coughs> you, you get the sense that, uh-oh, I'm never gonna be able to reach it. So if you could just forget about the, the, uh, right, the, high, the high notes, and just, it's not a high note, it's just a very intense, and just, cool? you know, you go with it, like he just went with it, yeah. anyway. Thank you for that, I appreciate that. That's oh, okay. my pleasure. Really that's a great song. Yeah, so so it's a real competition you created here. Abraham well, and Madcha, you gave them each one their. And they're both an a, they're both an A minor. So. Uh. Wow. <laughs> anyway. It's a good song. It's really both of them are great. So shall we shall we What's speed next? it up a little bit? What's that? Shall we speed it up a little bit? Uh, no, we're, good. we're actually Ooh. enjoying this. Um, guys, you could comment. You could um, do requests. Ooh. We're gonna be looking. About this song is that this song is about Moshe Rabbeini. Yeah, yeah. You know that. You know that there's no, there's no. The word Rabbeini does not show up in this lyric. His kapsi, the words come from um, from the Hakafis of Simchas Torah. So his kapsi, it's like it's like somebody's making an announcement in in the heavens and gathering all the malochim together. Uh, come, you have to see this. There's somebody. Somebody's like just somebody zoomed by and, and Moshe Rabbeinu came to get the Torah. And of course, the malucham, malucham never are never ever able to reach that height where where a neshama could reach, which you know from Chasidus, right? The malucham are in uh, they're in the the the, the matzav of ruach. And anyway, so um, so they're talking about mi ulu So they they, they saw somebody just uh, oh, just pass by. by, and uh, anyway, so so it's Moshe Moshe ulu so I just when, when I started working with Yiddish Nachas with these kids, there's something beautiful to see a little, a little child, saying Moshe Rabbeini, yes. and yeah. anyway. So we'll do the first of two Moshe Rabbeini songs. You like the word Moshe Rabbeini? Oh, I that's love like Moshe Rabbeini. Well, as you should, you also put in Moshe Rabbeini. Oh, yes, true. Yes, that's yes. Yes. Moshe that's Rabbeini. That's, that's but that's you're, still, you're, stealing, you're stealing. You're stealing. What's the name? You're stealing the. Uh, the, the so. <laughs> We're building up to it. Okay. Anyway. Okay, Kevin. Mm, aha. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
שמחים זה אל זה, זה לקוב אל זה, ויאמר זה לזה. איי הסכמתי, מלוכים זה אל זה, זה לקוב אל זה, ויאמר זה לזה. הסכמתי, מלוכים זה אל זה, זה לקוב אל זה, ויאמר זה לזה. walking on 16th Avenue in Borough Park one Friday, and uh, I, tell, I tell the story all the time, I don't care, it's just a great story. This, this old yid passes me by, and he says to me, Dias gemacht anigm mit Moshe Rabbeini. I hope everybody understands, there's no subtitles. <laughs> anyway, so, Ich war so lieb, zu hören, kleine jüdische Kinder singen Moshe Rabbeini. I would pay you, he says. If you make a whole album, nor songs for Moshe Rabbeini. <laughs> anyway. Nor with Kleine Kinder. I like that. <laughs> so, with Kleine Kinder, well. So as a matter of fact, so he said, you know what? We could do one more. It happens to be the Sedra this week, so. Oz you shir Moshe Rabbeini Even now you through El Vezer Es hashiru azoiz Es hashiru azoiz Es hashiru azoiz l'ashem Oz you shir Moshe Rabbeini Even now you through El Es hashiru azoiz Es hashiru azoiz Sashiru Azoi Slashem does not appear then. Es Ashiru Hazois, Es Ashiru Hazois, Es Ashiru Hazois, Lashem. Oz Yushir Moshe Rabbaini, Even a Yisrua. Es Ashiru Hazois, Es Ashiru Hazois, Es Ashiru Hazois, Lashem. So Rabbi 
fit in there you always you shir moisha moisha right there you go anyway okay people are asking uh, first of all you know we grew up listening to your compositions okay um so we want to know what got you into this how did you start composing songs so the truth is that um we didn't even know it was called composing at that time. Today we have a whole, uh, you know, there were, you know, there were some some great songs out at the time. Um, of course, uh, Reb Schleimer was was uh, performing, but uh, we didn't listen so much so much to Reb Schleimer in the beginning. We didn't really have access to his albums when we were when we were younger, but we did have access to kids' albums. You had London, London. We had well. London. We had first of all the 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 first Pirche. That's where it all began, by the way. So we were doing those. That was the first album, and the second album was I mean, like the gorgeous songs. So these were all. So we heard those, and, and when an album came out, we, we, everybody would run to the store and we would buy the album, you know. So we grew up around those songs, and then came London. Now London was a whole different world, because um, London was, I don't know if I dare say it, but it was, it was the first kind of post-Holocaust expression of mm -hmm. Jewish music, where people were, who, who, were, who were born after, after the Holocaust began to to write on their own, and that was Yigal Salak and that whole Salayum to Dasayum, Faltilium, Faltiliashim, Salayum to Dasayum, Faltili. And Elokai to Riyachas a boy, Mogini the Karen Yishi. These are not my songs, but these are, these are his. But these are great songs. Oh, these so are incredible how, songs. How is it like you think, okay, I got a spot here, and I think I could. No, I didn't. Take I, I, I Jewish didn't. Jewish music I didn't. to the next level. I, I had no spot. So you're asking, uh, uh, some how? Where my first song? How? Yeah. How? Well, what happened was I, I lived in I lived in London. I went to yeshiva mm. in London, in Stamford Hill, and uh, I lived by a fam. By, I lived with a, a family of mine, and um, this family was uh, big. They had kind of nine children at the time, nine nine little children, and I had a room in the attic, <laughs> and in this attic. So I don't know if you've been to London. Um, I, have, and I know there's some people from London and Manchester. By the hi Sam, Sam Solomon, Manchester. I know you're up. You I know you're listening. Shout out. It's late, Manchester. but uh, wow, it's late in Manchester now. Anyway, we got so, all night here, Hebron. <laughs> <laughs> so, so and and in that, so I used to come home. I don't know if you know, London to begin with is not a very it's not a very, uh, it wasn't a very happy place in, in those days. So you come up from Yeshiva at 8 o'clock and you kind of went to your room and, I you know, I didn't... Still, it's still not. Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's, 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 much, the weather. it's much better. Look, Shlomi Gertner lives in Stanford Hill now, so there's, there's sunshine. The guys, yeah. there, 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 there is sunshine in London, anyway. And, and um, so I, I used to go up to my room at night and, uh, and I lived in this attic, which had, it was, like, it was a big room like this. It had lots of boxes and lots of, uh, you know, where they used to put all kind of, it's called flotsam and jetsam. You know, that, you know what these words are? Not really. Oh, no. you didn't hear that? that That's it's, from... it's, it's stuff, you know, that from all the years, it's called, you know, flotsam and jetsam. Anyway, so, and I noticed one day, I'm sitting, I'm sitting on my bed and I see in the corner, I see like a, like a big, like a big piece of some kind of furniture with boxes on it. And I was curious and I went over and I began to take the boxes off. And lo and behold, there's an old piano there. A piano, you know, where each key had, you know, the keys were different levels, and some keys were missing and so on, but it was something to do with, and I, I didn't really know how to play the piano, but I had some kind of a, uh, an, uh, you know, like I had an aptitude for it, and, and uh, I began to, to play with one finger, I played. My little thing it wasn't it wasn't this, it, I wasn't aware even that I was that I was writing That's a song a because this song. was like well yeah it, it, this was like a pattern that I kept repeating That's how things are born it's 
sounds like almost like a piano, like a, like a practice. You do a piano, piano mm -hmm. exercise, mm -hmm. piano exercises. And, um, and I was very fortunate to meet Yigal at that, at that time, which is a story in itself. But, um, and he had asked me once, he needed songs, and he said to me, you know how, how nice it would be if you would be writing in and out. I, I loved music, I loved to listen to songs. I was very, but I didn't feel I had a personal connection. And then when he asked me, did you ever try? And, uh, and then I said, well, I have this little ditty that I, that I do. You know, I didn't have words for it or anything. And, I, I, and he heard it and he went crazy. It's like totally uh, up his ass. Uh, it's like just as if he came over to you and asked, could you compose a song for me? That's, that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, but that, well, that was obviously when I was coming from that world. I was living in London at the time. Uh, I was listening so to London School of Jewish Songs. I mean, you know. And, and um, he didn't exa exactly know what he says. Could you slow it down? Could you uh, slow it down? What, slow, what, what do you mean slow it down? I, I, you know, he, he, he was kind of, uh, he wanted it to go into a, into a wall. He experience this. But he didn't even know exactly what exa what did he want. He wanted, uh, could you play it differently? Play it, I play piano. I mean, what, you know, the whole, <laughs> anyway. And he, once he heard it, once I was able to slow it down, he ran to the, Svarim Shank, and he took out uh, Breshis, it was the, the Parsha of Aichi at the time, and he says that there's a Rashi over there in Ba'ani, Bo'ayim, Ipad, and Aram, that, that, that writes, Koil Barum, and Ishma, and he went ahead, and he, he sat with me, and he, like, 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 a, like a sergeant, until, uh, until I, until, until, hammered it until out. we hammered out <laughs> the song, and that's, that was the end. Wow. And I had no idea, so what are you going to do with this song now? He says, well, we're going to do a concert. What's a concert? Who knew what a concert was? He says, we go, we travel, we perform for people. People come to see. The only concerts that I saw was weddings. By the way, there's many kids today that's still the only concerts they Probably. see is a wedding. So, and he explained, no, on, there's a stage and we sing for people. And then, uh, anyway, and then I remember I attended in Brooklyn College, not far from here, that Hanukkah, we came back to America. And um, that was the beginning. Wow. That's, that's, how all that, uh, that's how it all started. Wow. Too much information, or that was well, that's uh, a good song because of that. Avramel came to you, and or that's a separate well, story. yeah, but that's years later. You're talking about this here, and here I'm 19. When Avramel came, was already I was like a good six, six, seven years later. Wow. You had a many songs, sure, sure, show. yeah. So, Yigal was the first one that. Yeah, I'll sing what happened, what, what, whatever happened to, where this thing developed. Oh, <laughs> 
You don't know, but it was just as it was a big, just as a hit as big as this. Also from Matzah Shabbos. That was a big shot already because I did call the Roma. He says to me, "Don't you have another one?" I said, "I don't know. We can try it." That time it was. That was the uh, yeah, sure. And the second was which I wrote a part of the he, the third one. He named Atoyvu Manoyim. He named Atoyvu Manoyim. He named Sarkim Vayachim Gam Yachad. He named Atoyvu Atoyvu Manoyim. Noim Sheve Sarkim Vayachim Gam Yachad. I would know that you composed this one. You won. We were out. How many songs did he compose? Let's go. Let's go. We, we wrote it. 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 We have all night here. Nobody's running away. And how did you get to meet Abraham? So, so what happened was I got married. Thank you, Mazda. And um, what year? Do the so, uh, don't do the tough <laughs> shit thing on me again. Nineteen seventy six. Wow. Yes, seventy six. My wife is watching this, and if I'm going to get this wrong, <laughs> okay. nineteen. I think nineteen seventy six, seventy seven. One of those years, you know. Anyway, and um, we got married. We lived in Bar Park for a little while. And then, did I know Avram? No, I did not know Avram. I met him in Seagate when we moved to Seagate. We lived there for two years. And one day there was a knock at the door. Oh, I'm telling everybody because it was a real knock at the door. We had no cell phones. So if, if you were going to get, if somebody was going to come to visit you, he wouldn't be able to call you up and say, by the way, can I come over? No, the assumption was you're home. Where, 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 where would you be? And I knocked and I opened up the door and there was Shia Mandlowitz with Avramel. Shia was a big guy. Avramel was a very thin guy. They looked like a um, before and after. Uh, Shia, Shia doesn't mind this, me saying this. That's why I, he's the one that... I think Daddy is the one who coined that phrase. Oh, wow. It looked like a before and, a, before and after uh, shot. And um, they came upstairs. And you know we lived upstairs in the house where we live in right now. We had a tenant downstairs. They came upstairs and Shia says to me, I want to do an album with this guy. And um, we're coming here for songs, which was very straight to the point. Well, straight to the point. And Most now, was, don't know how to do so that. the question: Where did I know Shia from? So Shia, I knew because Shia was in the London. And what happened was London School. In the beginning, they used to bring the kids in, and then it became too expensive to bring eighteen kids, eighteen tickets from London. So Yigal Salak had a choir in New York called the New York School of Jewish Song. Wow, 
with different kids, same different songs. kids. He trained, oh, they trained the kids, wow. and it was Hashi Leibowitz at the time. He trained the kids, wow. and Yigal performed the, on stage. People do to make a living. <laughs> Absolutely, and Shia was in the choir. So when I was 18, 19 years old, and I had written Kol Barama, Shia was in the choir at the time. He was a 12, 13 year old, year old at the time. 12 years old he was. And this was like five, six years later. Now Shia is now 18 and he's bringing up Ramel and he's, he's doing, he's doing oh albums. My and of course, uh, um, at that time, I remember I, I sat down with Avramel by the piano and I asked him what he wants to sing about. Give me an idea what was the first interview that I conducted. Since then I've been conducting. This was, by the way, the interview that began that started it off because I needed direction when, I, when I'm going to write a song. Wh where are you going to go? You know, how do you? What do you want? What do you what, want? What's what the it, message? So what he, what's music? the message exactly? So today, it's it's. Then it was a very unique idea. This thing like you singing with a message. You know, people sang with words that, as long as you had um, Yiddish words or Russian words, Hain, and, and you didn't know what it was. Hain, it was yeah. highly you know, It was highly Yiddish, exactly. Jewish. Highly it was Kaddish and so on. And and he said to me, I come. I belong to a family of Chabad Hasidim. I had no idea what that meant, by the way. No clue. And now you know what it means? <laughs> no, but I, I, I have a little bit. Oh, look, still, I found my way. Now. I found <laughs> my way over here. <laughs> but um, and he said to me, and we're we're shlichim. He comes from a family of shlichim. Everybody knows this. This Friedman is chashev, a Friedman family. Can I know her? I mean, people that are that are lighting up the world. And um, he was, I think, the youngest of the boys, I think. I'm not sure exactly yeah, what, yes. what he the still is. He still is, okay. And um, he said to me, we believe that no Jew gets left behind. I had never heard such, a, such an idea. No, by, by us, leaving behind was, if you didn't uh, pass the finals, you got left behind. <laughs> no, but he was talking about no, no Jew gets left behind. So I remember as a, as a, as a, as a, as a uh, just as a, not as, as a spoof, I want you mean like, no Jew will be left behind. He says, yeah, 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 that. So I didn't write the, I wrote no, I, I wrote the word, no Jew will be left behind. But of course, at that time, there was a, there was a woman, her name is Penina Claver today. She's the one that wrote, that wrote the, that song and the, the one that came afterwards was, time is now. Na, 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 here and now. Do you know this song? Sure. Okay, yeah. good. That was the second album, and uh, Can I Know Her? It became successful. Wow. So um, that's when we started writing songs seriously. That first album, No Jew, broke all kinds of sales records. And um, we realized that that Klal Yisrael was into the message. That's amazing. And, and you came on a time that it was already... Yeah, there was not much going on. I know, but they had great songs. The songs yeah. that they had were great songs. You couldn't just come up with... Uh, right, exactly. You came oh, up with quality songs, songs, songs the that actually took off. Yeah, so who was writing songs at the time? Rup Shlaimi was writing, uh, still writing at the time. Um, the one who kind of was the Mamala Mukam, the real Mamala Mukam, in my opinion, of Rup Shlaimi was Rup Baruch Shait, right. who uh, wrote... Me, and of course, he wrote, he wrote a lot of the big songs. And he wrote, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, and Shia was a big fan of, of, uh, of, uh, of this Baruch Shait. And every song in the beginning, like I wasn't very interested in writing fast songs at the time. To me, it was all about the message I wrote, you know. So the, the album would begin with the Baruch Shait song and it would proceed to, a, to one of my songs. This is the way we, uh, you know. And, um, that's how we started the career, and that's a nice amount of years ago. I've mean, been talking about, I mean, close to 40 years. Anybody is 40 over here? Yeah. <laughs> we're getting there, we're getting there. We're getting, yeah, pretty close anyway. to it. Okay, so. let's look, let's see what people are requesting here. We're, like, we're getting last here. Hope I'm it's answering the questions at the... Yeah, so this was, wow, so No Jew Will Be Left Behind was the first song you composed for Abraham? For Abraham, yes. Yeah. Hmm. And the second one was, remember, if you, let's see if you know the second one. Oh, I'm a 
so much time in the wedding that you can sing that songs. Much to sing them, so. The problem today is that um, um, that there is maybe a 15 minute, people have not thought about this, if you want to think about this, there's maybe a 15 minute slot in a wedding where you can even dare to, to sing and to write and to play a new song. Because you have the the chuppas and you have the kates and the ragdim and you have the oidi shamas and you have the yeah. the songs that everybody expects because they're dancing and they they have dances and they're waiting. Must for have. That. So the, where the, is that new song that you put in? So 50, you got, 20 minutes. I would you got 15, say, yeah. 20 minutes. And everybody. In Crown Heights, we do two hour set dances. You're right. Second, you have. All the a time in the world. Of, a lot of time. Oh, for no, I'm, yeah, yeah, but there's enough songs to fill up two hours of dances that people songs know. songs that you really have to sing. So, right, like so if you want a new song, a a, dance so, yeah. so all the new albums, they're mm -hmm. all shooting for those 15 minutes. You know, I, you gonna throw I, in I, I walked away from those 15 minutes. I said, well, what, 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 this, this, the chuppah is so long, and Shabbos is so long, and Yantav is so long, and davening is long. Right. Also, yes, you so need much. songs for those. More, more so than that. So every once in a while, uh, one, you know, one got in. You like know. a skapti falls in, you yeah. know, <laughs> to, to fill in the 50 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. You need 50 minutes just for that song, actually. Yes. That's <laughs> so. Okay, so uh, another question is here. Um, how, how did Tanya come about? So Tanya was already, was already, um, after Meshoy Chazdecha was where that's where it was the, the parashas, the rochem, the the, uh, the, fork. the fork in the road. What does Yogi Berra say? If you come to, to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, so that was the fork in the road that, mm -hmm. that we took. And Avremel, we, we took it together. And um, because till that time, um, Jewish music was really... There were two part songs. There was you had a low part, you had a high part, and then they were they were great, you know. Like when Rachem Chazder Ben Dovid Avdecho Yovoi, right? It's beautiful. But to take a song and to take to take a and have all kinds of uh, chazanas and slow and fast and in in three and in yeah. four and to go back and yeah. different parts. Because we began to look at lyrics. Yitzirah. Like Yitzirah, right. And we began to look at lyrics, and um, the lyrics had to be interpreted. So all of a sudden, we, began, we got older, and we, we, we began to understand. And so I began to write songs that reflected the lyric. And that's at that point. And that was a big uh, problem, because certain people did not want him to go in that direction. They were afraid that people would get bored from this kind of stuff that no, they wanted the... Without names, who was it? No, 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 <laughs> no. I'm saying other people that were in the, oh, in the industry okay. were advising him, no, but that's not, that's not going to be good for you. You and stay as a pop singer. And, and, yeah, and, and, he, right, and he said no, and we, we moved along. So the, so, so the first song was Moshe Chazor. You know Moshe Chazor. Sure. I'm not going to do that now. Chazor. You know Moshe Chazor? Really? Can we do a little Moshe Chazdor? Of course. Well, hold on a second. But this What's one, the question? We got the right we artist. We got, to, we got to find the key for Moshe Chazdor because that is, if you don't start in the right place, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> you can wind up in like... Found yourself on Mount Everest. So, it's actually a song with a huge range. Um, That's why you have to be careful. No, mm -hmm. definitely not there. You don't want to be there. Let's see. Oh, here we 
Park. I'm glad we did the Yogi Berra thing because it's my mom is it. Wow. Took it together. Uh, I, see, I see I have a relative in the audience here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Is that you? Oh, wow. <laughs> His father was my Rebbe, my first Rebbe for Chassidus. Actually, after, after, um, after Reb Dubov, after Reb Yitzhak Dubov. Zichroin of the Broca. Okay, so are we uh, you ready for more questions? Yeah. Um, so this Can't song actually has, time, has a out. huge. First, first of all, we, we forgot about Tanya. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, but, because world. you because you asked what was the first. How did yeah. we get to Tanya? You okay. can't. So this is how you we can't got get to, to Tanya <laughs> before you pass Mishoy. This is how we got to Tanya. <laughs> now Tanya. Anyway, no, actually, Mishoy was the was the first one, and then you know. Amazing. Yeah, Tani came later. Tani was already in the, on the We Are Ready album. That was already. Uh, Did you ever compose a song with us with an easier range than uh, than this? Shaykh? Well, it, what's the smallest the smallest range? Oh, the smallest say? range. Ah, that's your question. Yeah. So, so in the beginning, obviously, Avramel had Leon Hara, this huge voice, and this huge range, and he had all these different emotions that he that he wanted to express and so on. So, and one of the problems that resu has resulted for me was that um, people would try to sing the songs that I wrote, and of course, if it wasn't the Vremel, they, they would have problems. They would say, why can't you just write a song like Kalbach? Oh, yeah, 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 oh, oh, yeah, yeah, gorgeous, all the emotions. It's all there, right? And, and, but these songs wouldn't, would Avram would say, well, what does that do for my, my, there's nothing for me, really. I mean, that's a, he has to shine. He it's has a beautiful crowd song. He had his own no, 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 I, no, no, it's not the, the only division. It's, it's, Mim Kaim these songs were crowd songs. Songs for ah, people to sing together. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, you mean, I, not everybody has a voice like you. Right, exactly. It's got a, you know, each dude's a cast. So so I was writing for solos. I was writing for solos. What? Like this song, you can't sing it on the Shabbos table. Well, yeah, you know, he could. He, the, he, he <laughs> could sing about the Shabbos table. So, <laughs> you could also, actually. Well, I sing it every week in my Shabbos table. Oh, really? Shoif? <laughs> Bamas, really? <laughs> oh, wow. I'm too anyway. tired for that. So, so um, every once in a while, and, but this only happened later, I didn't realize what was going on. I was writing for people that were solo, solo singers, and every solo singer wanted a song that could show off what he can show do. Them. So and that was important for the, for him, you know, and um, it was only later that I was working with with uh, with Matcha already, and I'm jumping because you notice Matcha is not even in this conversation yet, though I knew him when I was a little kid. I knew Matcha when I was a little child, and we were good friends. And he lived a few houses away from me. While all this was going on, he lived four or five houses away from and me. And he never came he still to you does. and asked you why don't you compose a no, song? No, no, he never did. No. And we, we were starting to talk Who before. Who composed songs for, for him? For he did. He himself. did. He was he a great composer. He, he wow. still is a great composer. I mean, you know. <laughs> Who wrote that? I'd rather pray and sing. I mean, he was, he was a great he's a great writer. He, wow. Part of his, his career in the beginning, the way he developed was that he was writing songs and singing so. songs. It wasn't that you went someplace else and you got a song from somebody to sing. There was something... Not organic about that, by the way. And that's the way it was. People don't, under don't understand that. I mean, and he wrote and, and he experimented. Like he had... So he had all these songs. Do you know the song? Yeah. Oh. No so, so he was able to... He experimented. He did his own thing. He experimented. And everybody loved... Well, you know, you went out, the new al when he put out a new album, everybody ran to buy the album. And you, you struggled to learn and to understand what did he write? What was the composition about? It's not like you came with an expectation, well, let me see if it fits into what I consider is a, is a what's name, is a, uh, yeah. you know? It's very interesting. All of that stuff changed later. There wasn't a lot of stuff then either. What? You know, people... Well, there was uh, there was a good. He put out an album once every eighteen months, let's say. That took I know, two but years. every album that he that he put out or that Abramo put out, you, you know, years ago, it's, it was anticipated. It was right, beca right because, because but they, they were allowing they were allowing uh, the singer to set the pace and to tell the story. 
Now, instead of the, the audience saying, well, I, I would like like this. I'd like a couple of pounds of uh, hora. I wanted some disco. Okay. I want a, I want a, you know, like, uh, yes. give me a couple of ounces. And they're like, you know, and, you know people decide what they want. Order. Yeah. Which is fine, you know, time changes. Anyway, so um, your question was, oh, <laughs> well, that song. Yeah. The song. The, the, right. The song. So, so this one's so, for Matra, actually. This one was Matra. Right. So we, we talk about a song that has a very short... Uh, let me give you an example. And of was it made Lechatchila to be like that? that yeah, he wanted yeah. It was meant Lechatchila to be like that because at the time, I remember he had some issues with his voice and um, he had a good octave at the time. And um, you know, today his voice, Bli Ein Hara, he sounds better than he ever did, by the way. Today he's just comfortable and he's this... You, know, you, can put, you can put your head down on that voice and listen to it. It's so you stunning. actually had to cater and, and, and tailor and a song. With, with emotion. You know, you had to get wow. the right emotion. So let, I'll tell let, you. Let's hear the song. Yeah. The song before the story or the story before the song? Well, the story before There's the a, You have to understand how this emotion happened. So okay, so we, I, did, I did an album with Avramel at the time, and it was called um, uh, On Giant's Shoulders, a song. The name, there was a song on Giant's Shoulders, and the idea was, this is Avramel's idea, I think Avramel may have even written the lyric to this song. And um, it was about this, this giant who uh, has this dream to take his little child to see, to see the palace of the king. And um, he, he, one day he sets out, he takes his little child, and they walk and walk and walk, and they get to this place, and they see, <clears throat> the giant can see already the, the palace, but he gets to the, to, the, to, the, to, the uh, to the wall, and he sees that he can't, even the giant, the wall is higher than the giant himself. And how's his little kid gonna see, gonna see the king? So he, without an, any braira, he takes the child and he says, look, I can't, I'm gonna put you on my shoulders and you'll see the palace Great, of the king. Son. And I'll, you'll Who's tell me, idea? this the, is Avramel, Avramel. Giant, giant, giant idea, beautiful idea. It's very touching. And, and, the, and the, mush, the nimshl was that, that, you know, you have all these, Tzaddikim that lived through Before thousands us. of years and they yes. were not Zoichet to see Mashiach. Are we going to be Zoichet to see Mashiach? It was a kind of a question. Why? If, if, if Mashiach didn't come for, for Kiva Eger, he didn't come for the Balatanya, he didn't come, why is he going to come for us? You know, that was the, uh, and the idea was that the giants, they did all the work and we just have to give that last little, push. That last push. So one day I'm saying Tilim and I, I see this incredible thing. I see David HaMelech in Tilim who is the father of Mashiach Ben David, so to speak. And he writes about the, the, exactly this message in Tilim thousands of years ago, that there may be a possibility that Tal Yisrael will only be Zoichet to see Mashiach only at the end of time when there won't be any giants left. And, and um, the words were, Ki Elohim Yoshiach Zion, V'yivna Orei Yehuda, V'zera Avadav Yinchalu, the children of, the, of, his, of his servants. So what Zera Avadov? What's Zera Avadov? You know, he's Avadov, right? Unbelievable. So I said, look, right in here is the, um, Here's the message. So I'll start it and. Uh, Yeah, 
A great team together. <laughs> I must say. This is not our first uh, no. duet, actually. Well, we come from so the same. We come from the same world. Together? Is there any others like? Well, on my yeah, albums. Song, yeah. yeah. We actually have a song that that yeah. it's not this week's parsha per se, but it's from the from the mass of the Mitzrayim, with Paroi, with the whole thing. It's called Pen Pen. That was actually and a Bremel's lyric. It was a Bremel's idea. Bremel's idea. The idea of Pen Pen, uh, Ken Ken. You know, Mitzrayim asked Pen Yirbe, and and wow. Hashem said yes, we'll do. Aaron Bremel's idea to, to come to compose it for you. For you? No, oh, Bremel came to him. With the, with the idea, time, with idea that time, and um, it didn't work out for with Avram all the time, but I wrote it for him. Great. Let's hear it. Atamoy mepen, valioy mepen, atem pen, valioy ken. So you know this is Parry, Parry the story with the, right, right, it's pa- because um, what, how was it? Ken, Ken, pen yifroits. Parry said pen yifroits, right. and we said Ken yirbu. So there's, so there's this Atam uh, Oimrim Pen, Vani Oimr Ken. So this argument between Klal so Yisrael and, 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 uh, and Paro. Okay, yes. we had fun making the song yeah. and talking about it. Atam Oimr Pen, Vani Oimr Ken, Atam Pen, Vani Ken, Atam Oimr Pen, Vani Oimr Ken. Atem pen ba ani ken. Atem oim ri pen ba ani oim ri ken. Atem pen ba ani ken. Dum dum. Atem oim ri pen ba ani oim ri ken. Atem pen ba ani ken. Pen di Freud's. Ken yirbu, ken ken, ashlo yizu fei meroi, ashlo yizu fei meroi, meroi meroi ken 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 yifro, it's ken ken, ashlo yizu fei meroi, ashlo yizu fei meroi, ken yifro, it's pen pen, ken yirbu, ken ken, ashlo yizu fei meroi, ashlo yizu fei meroi. Pen ye froids, pen pen, can ye bet? Can can, actually, so femidoy, actually, so fail me. Pen pen, can can, after what the boy made it pen, can can, can can, body I make pen pen, pen pen, after what the boy made pen, can 
That's actually yeah. what it's supposed to be. When I made my first album, so Avremo was sort of my idol, you know, growing up. And he uses the same voice teacher as I do. So we, I met him there a couple of times. So I asked him as a singer going into the album, what's the main thing I should do? I know buying songs, whatever, the arrangements, all. So he told me just, just the Perish Hamilis should be very important to you. You know, you should understand what you're actually saying when you're singing. And, and you know what, it, it went into my head. And, even now, by, by weddings when I sing, whatever I sing, I actually have in mind the words. And that helps. It helps. We, you we, see we it. actually you feel see it. it right here. I don't know. So. But Hebre, one of your comments. You know, these singers, they don't stop uh, coming Matsu Shabbos. They give up from the time, including Yossi Green. We really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you're making a wedding coming up, this is definitely a singer to, uh, to get. You know, some singers, they start off the evening and then from then on, you know, if it's a good singer with a good technique, it actually gets, gets better and better yeah. and better as the night, as the evening goes on. You know, on. one of his, uh, when I got to know him in the beginning, one of the things that, that, that um, he had that very few people had, he had, he was in perfect pitch all the time. Pitch that he, whether it's his ears, whether whatever, he is, he is incredible pitch. He's on, you see, pitch is, is um, pitch means to be on the note, to be right in tune. Tune by that you could be slightly off tune, not badly off tune, you could be slightly off tune, and that, and that most people wouldn't tell, can't tell the difference, but musicians can, and musicians loved to perform with him because he was always... It's interesting, you know, we, we it, talked about it the last comments, since I told him that. Yeah. Big Kiddush. It's a big Kiddush. Not everybody is, uh, is in tune. So you don't have to yeah. be flat. We, we, th we think that, uh, well, he off sings flat. Right. We're not talking about flat. We're talking about slightly off. That, that yeah. percentage, most, most people don't really, uh, you know. They don't hear it, right? Yeah, you'll be the one with it. It's a matona from It's a gift, yeah. He yeah, has this, a he's gift, a gift right? of uh, being in pitch. Okay. Any, let's, see what, let's see what else we got. We're getting carried away here. Oh my gosh, there's a huge list. <laughs> I love him, thank you, Minayim. I love him. I also had a lot of requests for a novim. She's on the way to Anovim. What's the story with Anovim, Taka? What's the. Are you asking? Or are you like. Anovim. I'm trying to give me a conversation. <laughs> well, it, it started off, it was somebody had a, a, um, a wine a wine press. And it was Anovim, Anovim, Higi Azman, you know. It took a long time for the for the grapes to ripen that year, and um, people in this it, it was now running. I know him, I know him. He is trying to press the uh, grapes in order to make wine out of it. And uh, anyway, but how did you make? I the hope song? You, I hope every you don't believe me. Every song has a story. <laughs> every song has a story. So the, the people 
What the beauty of Anovim was not so much the song or the writing. The beauty of it was that people connected to it, that people really connected to the message. And um, this idea of Mashiach standing on the roof, you know, the Havdal Fiddler on the roof, you know, Mashiach on the roof, people were, were only at the time. The idea that, that, um, that Mashiach is standing on the top of the Beis HaMikdash, the new Beis HaMikdash, and he's still pleading with Klal Yisrael to believe him that he's here. Wow. You know, he, he's giving, he's giving, he's giving haychokas, he's giving proof that he's here, which kind of, for me was very powerful because, you know, we grew up in a, in a post-Holocaust um, time. It's very hard for people to understand what that means. When we went, when I, when I was a little kid, I went to shul with my father and the people took off their, their sleeves in order to put on film. Everybody had a number. Everybody had a number tattooed on their arm at the time. So Klalisol was, was, was coming off the, one of the worst times in history. And these were Tzabrach and Eden that were making a go of it again and putting on film again and raising Jewish families again. And, huge, and you know, yeah. it, was, it was a very big, I remember there was an old Eid and I walked over and I asked him, what's the number? What is that number? So he told me that he looks at me and he smiles and he says, when I was a little kid, I couldn't remember my phone number. And as many times as I tried, I couldn't, so my mother wrote it for me on my, on my arm so that I shouldn't forget. Wow. What was he gonna tell the kid, you know? So, so, and as I got older, the Mashiach, old, as a matter of all of our songs, really, the first English song I wrote was called A Letter to Mashiach, which was on Mayor Sherman's album, before our album. And then No Jew Will Be Left Behind, and then Goodbye Gullis, and then um, Hold Down Just a Little Bit. Tell you. You know, and, uh, goodbye Gullis, and then um, wow. Hold Down Just a Little Bit Longer, and, and, and um, everything was, was about this, you know? And it kind of got, you know, and of course the Rebbe was about, talking about this every, everywhere, you know? And, and after, after a while, I began to see that the message was not, was not as strong as it used to be. And, um, and I was very disturbed by it, you know, because it was, you know, you know, Mashiach is, is Klal Yisrael's exit plan. You know, every people have a business. This is not, strategy. there's an exit strategy. Where we go it's from here? Where do we go? When I went out to home. Is, is and I, I once, I remember I asked, I asked a kid, a successful kid, and I, he's like a young man, and I said to him, so what's, what are you looking forward to? When you asked us, we, we, we were afraid to make a plan on Hanukkah, what we're going to wear, what we're going to wear Purim. So the boys got together and the back as well. If Mashiach doesn't come before Purim, yes. I'd like to be a lion. I'd like to be a soldier. You know, that was the, but we were busy with that. I, mean, I even remember even further, which was even strange, like before Pesach, we would make plans where we're going to go to camp together. And then we said, Mashiach doesn't come. And we were hoping, please, maybe Mashiach, if, he could, if he's going to come, if he yeah. can come after camp. <laughs> because camp, you know, we, we were looking forward to camp. And you, know, the, you know this, this thing, this joke, it's not a saying that a chusen under the chippa could ask for whatever he wants. Poil Shia says, no, why doesn't anybody ask Mashiach to come? There's, they all think, okay, after my chas, and after <laughs> Sheva you know? And he, right. He was afraid, he, these guys were afraid that, yeah, that he was af so afraid, this chas was afraid that he's got such koyach under the kopa, you know, not, anyway. So, and, and, I, and I saw the message get schwacher, you know, and of course I wrote that song, Hesse Chadas, right? So, what was the concept of Hesach Adas? We could never understand. How, how, how could you be a Mashiach Adas or Mashiach? So that really was our, is my lyric. How is it possible for somebody to be a Mashiach Adas? Right? <laughs> anyway, so, and I began to realize that, that the Hesach Adas doesn't mean that people, they're just not busy with it anymore, you know? So when I saw this, this, um, um, I love him, that, that, if you may not tell me, I mean, so, so that was the reason why, and I saw that people, people got the message. People got the message. <laughs>
No, but right, but the ones that are, I'm, I'm, I was saying the second one was the car. Oh, sure. So the latest one is um, we discussed the possibility of doing a new song. If you want to hear the new, the new Yiddish Nachas, I'm working on the new Yiddish Nachas, that's Yiddish Nachas Volume 4. Billy Einhara, it was like, uh, this is one of the most precious, precious projects that I'm involved with in the last four or five years. We're, up to, we're on to our fourth album. And um, in each, the first, the first one had Ata Kodosh. Ato kodoi, v'shim kodoi. Ato choi nein, the second one. Ato choi nein. Hey, ato choi nein. The yodom das ulam meila and noish. Right. The third one had slach slach loni. Oh yo 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 vino. for me to write because I didn't really have the message of Reino Vanienu. I didn't really get the message very clear because because it says that the first few brochas of Shmanasra are personal requests. And by Tkab Shoifer they begin the the requests of the Klal. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't understand what's Reino Vanienu, what's he doing if it's about Gula. So it's not my question. The Gemara asked this question and so on, but I couldn't really connect <coughs> until I finally understood that we talk about it's a gula, it talks about a gula nafshis. That we, we are, we, we need our own redemption. Nothing to do with God. And then comes Kaaba Shoifer, but this is, you know. <laughs> 
Changed. Daddy really was another Proshas Rochem. He was another uh, fork in the road. Completely went, went. And he, you see that he liked songs like these, but he wanted they should still be pop. They should still have a certain. The Zakoi says his royal road, so a Kodesh Barku, while the Zakoi says his royal road, so a Kodesh Barku, while the Zakoi says his royal road, so a Kodesh Barku, while the Zakoi says his royal road, so a Kodesh Barku, while the Zakoi says his royal road, so a Kodesh Barku, while the Zakoi says his royal road, so a Kodesh Barku, while the Zakoi says his royal road, Shart Noim, well, Shart Noim was... Um, These are messages that are like... <sighs> oh, yeah. They came from left, not left, but it's, it's just, it's amazing that everybody's singing about Mashiach, but each time you had a great, a great way to present it. Yeah, that was, uh, oh, F minor, believe it or not, Shart Noim. So, so what question, which, 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 do, which do we want to tackle, Shart Noim or Yuchad Barabim? Let's start with Shart Noim, you know, well, which has man. Shart Noim, okay, so Shart Noim... At the time, I, um, Shatnam actually is a Satmar construction, believe it or not, because it was very interesting. Very few people knew that Shatnam existed outside of Satmar at the time, because um, we knew it because in the second day of Shavuos, uh, between, between Mincha and, Ak- and Akafis, mm-hmm. right? If, if uh, you don't, you don't, I'm not sure that you're, that you're familiar with this. The second day of Akafis between what am I? Uh, what am I talking about? Shvuas. Second day of Shvuas. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to say, like, what is he talking about? But yeah, it's all running together yeah, now. Yeah. Um, so second day of Shvuas. Chalamoy Shvuas. So Chalamoy Shvuas. Yeah, that it should have been a Chalamoy Shvuas. Anyways, so so. Second Satmar day of Shvuas. They used to say. 
the start in Safma they said start nine. There was this a long piece. It's a long mm -hmm. piece. There's the Ksuba, there's the time and the Ksuba that was written by Rabbi Srom Najara, who was one of the is the Mahabar of Koriban Olam. You know Koriban? Sure. So that, that poem. We're get to that too. <laughs> okay. So he wrote that lyric and, and um, he also wrote a whole beautiful piece of a the contract, the super contract between between the Rabbi Shloilam and Klal Yisrael, the Tanoim contract. And we grew up, we knew it was a long, we had to wait. The Rabbi used to say it, and all the Hasidim. Yeah, it was a whole tish. It was a whole, yeah, sure. the, the, they said this, so I nobody... Feel at home, I'm sorry. The, yes, no, nobody knew, about nobody knew about this, Shad Noim. So uh, mm -hmm. I remember I showed you to Avram, and he says, really? Where, who? So I showed him at the time that this is Rishon Najara, it's a Talmud Darizal. Anyway, the problem with Shad Noim was that it's huge. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't, and you, you can't. So, the bunch of them was Choyn and Das, so we came up with this beautiful, cute little idea called V'chulu. Oh. V'chulu, V'chulu. So this, wait a second, once you add V'chulu, V'chulu, that's already a Chabad. Then I can choose, right? Oh, then I, I'm not so sure it's a Chabad, the V'chulu. He didn't come up, he, so Avremo wasn't the one that did no, 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 this is, no, this, Avremo wasn't there at the time. Whose idea was it to put V'chulu in this? Me. Part? Because, I mean, I had no choice. How else were you going to write a song that takes two weeks to sing? You know, so... Uh, we have time. As it is. It's very interesting. I wrote a song for... I mean, I wrote a song for a Dudu Fisher called Be on the Rockets. So at the time, uh, I think, who was the... Um, Nachum Siegel was on the radio at the time. And whenever I used to go to, to do an interview, he says, you know what I love about your songs? Your songs give me an opportunity. I can go out and grab a sandwich. He says, I'm here from six o'clock <laughs> till nine o'clock. Sometimes I get, I get in Mamish at the, the, the right time and I don't have a chance to eat. And you know, and all these songs are two, three minute songs. You do songs, yeah, you, you can do a song like, you do a song like Start Noim, I can go out and get in. It's an Arod Be'an Arachitz, it was an eight minute song that you can go out and take a shower. But <laughs> of course, Be'an Arachitz in Aramaic does not mean a shower, I hope. Uh, hope. Anyway, mm, I couldn't resist the, uh, the Our joke. producers are gonna come back to after the shower. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go take a break now. So Start Noim. We need you for this one. This is <clears throat> oh. So Start Noim was basically, I had the opportunity to take out the things that were pieces that, that were very poignant, right. and instead of continuing the rest, the <laughs> hulu. So there's an intro. There's an introduction. And also, this is also very different in Syria than everything, because you had like a, like kind of you introducing the piece, and then you had this the Vali of Rihul. Right, and then you set aside the, the, two, the two sides, the chas and the kala, they each say, and then of course you have to eventually get to a dance, Yitzira. dance number, it's and uh, that's so right. Uh, and I thought at the time that Avram uh, would definitely nix this one because it was gonna be too long. And as it is, there were people saying who, at the time that some of these songs are just very, very long, and Avram said, what are you talking about? Let's just do it. So, um, <laughs> The Mazel Toiv, who'd believe that would be here 20 years later and sing this in, the, in YouTube or whatever. Hamagid Mereshi Sachris. We think she should use the Yeris. The way you do that in
Actually, there was a piece that Avremel found a little vertel from Rameir Shapiro, the one who, who, who um, the initiator of the Daf Yomi, and it was it was a, a medrash pelia on this um, on this uh, that the poetish mechaver. I'll I'll leave for Shelly bedvar b'toch dvar alocha, and and so the medrash says which alocha alocha of Yuchid Varab alocha Kral. And he explains why, you know, and so on. So it's a little, a little piece. It was a safer itura Torah, I remember, like it was a, like like Mionish Torah. It's like the Torah is on the week. And um, when I saw this, I saw this story. We wrote that whole, uh, you know, we, we created that whole story. That's that's not written anywhere. I mean, in, of course, it's it's there's the, the shu alive ashiv aleichem and ashiv ashivein about the the Yiddish. Story we wrote together, and um, that was the uh, that was the story of Yuchad Rabbim. Of course, uh, by Yuchad Rabbim, I thought 
I didn't think that it would become as popular as it did at the time because um, that was already, we were stretching it already, like, you know, but people love it. What does that mean, stretching it? And here you have a story of, of, of um, you know, with it's Yiddish. A very long and song. It's, 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 it's long and it's, um, you know, it's. He never did it at a concert, did he? Um, I don't know. I, I don't remember. I don't remember it uh, at a concert, but. Uh, for See, to say that, that took some courage at the time. The beautiful thing about about writing a song for somebody who who is a good singer is something called value added. You give him a song, and then when you do the arrangement, you come to you come to the studio and you hear him sing it, and he gives it back to you 10, 15 percent more than what you gave him. And then you give him back the harmonies, 10 percent more than that, and you know you feed off each other, and that's like uh, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so. Let's do another one. He told me that he's a Koyan and he wanted a he wanted a uh, brocha on benching the kids. Oh, that's
you had a song with, with, which had this range, like, uh, you know, and every time people got to that part, all of a sudden, that, that, that look of panic on their face. <laughs> Is that what happened to you? Is that why you fell out? Or no, because... no, I'm not 100% with this song. Hey, I know most of them. <laughs> anyway, hey. You also wrote another Kayo. I wrote two, two, more, two more Kayos. Two more? Two more. Yeah, sure. yeah, so the second one was for Slilva Zemmer. Which well, actually came from Crown Heights. This is a whole other conversation. Oh, yeah, we didn't sure. touch Silver Zimmer yet tonight. Well, you didn't we'll ask. Have to come back another week, I think. You didn't no, ask. No, well, we have you guys. It's not, okay. Kevin, it wasn't easy bringing these two over here, let me tell you. You guys are not leaving so quickly. <laughs> Gainafshi saro i gehile to eloiki oi 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 somo dafshi le eloiki oi lekel koi vosayo voi vehiro hene. second one this is the third one this is the one I wrote for Avremo the second I started talking about the one I wrote for Silver Zemmer ah, I was wondering Just a few years ago, oh. and I was happy to have this chutz to be the musician. Okay. But for the chuppah, he got that Zohar to come sing. He must be a, gra must be a the, grandfather, at right? At the chuppah. <coughs> really? Wow, it was so beautiful. I went, and I was thinking before, like, okay, some people have a great voice when they're younger, and then when they're older, they're. And he sounded so amazing. Really? I like, um, like my hands are shaking on the keyboard. Wow. <laughs> it was really, really okay. nice. Okay. <laughs> Um, one more, um, what did I want to say? Oh yeah, how did you meet uh, Avram Rosenberg? Well, the same way, the same way I met, but once, once... He came to you, he once, banged yeah, on yeah, the WhatsApp. Banged, they banged on the what? WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> it 
don't know what's happening. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no, are you kidding? So the, the, in those days, that's the way, you know, they got a phone call, can I come over? And he came over and told me he's doing a choir and uh, I said, a choir, another? Because that time- You're already doing for you, Gosta? New York School, we had Yigal Salak, we had Cho, Picher Shalim, a lot, a lot of uh, choirs were around those days. Anyway, I see that we're getting- uh, Yeah. Wow, we, I'm, I'm still, I'm just getting started here. <laughs> <laughs> what are we being, what are, what are they shutting the lights on us? No. Mm -hmm. What other songs did you do for Silver Summer? Um, okay, I just, I have to check the key to make sure. I want to get stuck here, and then the only one that's going to be able to sing is going to be uh, y y Yumi over here. Yeah, but he's doing a great job. I'm sure he's doing a great job, but he wants to rest every once in a while. Ah, I got it. It's a great one. It's a great one. Daddy redid checked. this one. We also never checked as kids, uh, you know, who's the composer later, later you know, Baruch HaVatzlacha, and as we all knew that it's your song as well. Sure. In the beginning, we, at least for myself. But that's how we did Shades of Green. Uh, the purpose right. of Shades of Green, all these songs appeared on Shades of Green. So on Shades of Green, yeah. we had the opportunity to redo them the way we wanted them to be done and so on. Uh, Yeah. 
yes. People want to know how many songs you're, you composed. <coughs> how many songs? Beerich, um, beerich. I always say... And well, he's got to know exactly. It's like, I'm, you ask so many, how I'm many kids you have, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, so the edit, I have the edit. the book alone. <laughs> the answer to that question is I'm really only interested in the songs that I did not write yet. How many songs I did not write. How many I wrote is not relevant. It's, you know, you know Roch is not chal only in something that's, that's some, yeah. some of them in the eye. That's not I know, but the, there's, each one has a story with it. And each yeah, one has... It's, it's, it's different singers, common. different stages of life, different, you know. And, and the stage that we're doing now with, with the kids is just beyond, beyond. The uh, Beli Ein Hara, this, the, we already have our clients who are buying this, the, this third album were kids that sang on the first album. So... Yeah. True. Which, which is the way, them, yeah. which is in those days, the way we built an audience was we wrote songs for kids, then we got a little older, and then we wrote songs for young, for, 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 for Bacharim, and then for Yungalite, and then slowly, slowly, and then now we kind of got to that peak. Like, for instance, for a young child to try to understand Avramel singing at this point, is, it's, not so, it's not so simple, because he, can I know, after all these years, the, his ability to sing and to interpret music, I mean, how do you, Explain that to an eight-year-old, but you want eight-year-olds to listen to Jewish music as well. Yes. So we're starting from this from this end again, hopefully to bring the audience back up again. And Baruch Hashem, it was an experiment that we tried with the first album, and it was successful. And uh, just don't forget each each few you have to put in another Meishu <laughs> Rabbi. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this one we want. Um, what, what was the? Uh, if you want, to, I give you. I give you There's an idea. That's saying, but he didn't do Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, the Atins Gezug. There you go. Put that in. What do you mean? I put that in. That was definitely. That. that was the first. I don't think he did Rabbeinu. I always do Rabbeinu. Oh, he always did. <laughs> he didn't interpret it. Uh, we have to first of all thank the websites because uh, you know we're having such a great time. We're forgetting. So well live, Grontig and what's is nice, Matzav.com, the Lakewood Scoop. Gula.fm, Kikara Shabbat, Shezali, wow. and um, yeah, everybody on Instagram, um, Chassid Shahak, Simcha Spat, there's a lot of names here, and uh, Kolchai, they also called me just this past week. And last but not least, really? Flow Motion Studios. Woo! Um, we thank them so much because they took a huge headache off of my back and off of my head, off wow. of everywhere because. This is a magnificent studio, yeah, by the yeah, way. Yeah, they take care of all the tech and. Um, if you could see what I'm looking, I'm looking at. <laughs> you guys can't see it's that, amazing. but I'm looking at cameras and screens so, yeah. and lights. Thank you, Tanavam. Thank you so much, Ben. Yeah. Baruch You guys are just amazing. You guys did a great, great job. Um, we have time for one more song. One more song. That's but we got like hundreds of songs here to choose from. It's not an easy task. <laughs> Shamati has to feel a circle. Shamati has to feel a circle. Shamati as the field is echo. Oh, 
Shumati Shumati Yes, the feelings are good Ruizi Ruizi Yes, the demons are good In the royal In the royal This is my favorite song, by the way, by Weddings. <laughs> oh. Really? Yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's also because it's the... No, the last part was written by, uh, what's his name? Yerushalayim. It was written by the deed from London. No, um, no what's his name? I have a shot of in this song, by the way. Oh, wow. You didn't know this? No, I didn't know. <sighs> we got to get... Could you do me a favor? Ask, ask, uh, ask, ask quickly what's the name of him. I don't want to... Uh, I want to give him credit. No.